Hi, I'm Denise Cunningham. I welcome you back to my home for just another simple video. I want to thank so many of you that watched the video that I posted earlier this week. And I want you to know that I'm coming to you with just these simple thoughts and these simple truths, just really out of what I believe God wants me to share. When I was preparing for the wilds and getting ready for that retreat, I realized after the fact of the virus coming and being a part of our lives that God was using that study time to prepare me for right now. And then as I we've entered through these days of the virus and these days at home, God really burdened my heart as I've been meditating on some verses from 1 John, where John says over and over again, these things that I have heard and seen, I'm going to bear witness to you. I'm going to write it to you. I'm going to tell you. And God really worked in my heart to say, the things that I've taught you, you need to encourage others. And so I'm just coming to you today with just a little bit of encouragement. I hope this will help you while we wait out however much time is left here during this virus time. But you know, the truth is that when this time of the virus is over, there will be something else that touches our lives. And we can apply these truths that God wants to remind us of today. So as I studied, I began looking into the life of Elijah. But before I got to his life, I looked in 1 Kings chapter 16. And when you read that chapter, you read that there were so many wicked rulers. But when you get down to the end of the chapter, we are introduced to King Ahab. And it tells us in verse 29 that he ruled over Israel for 22 years. He married a woman named Jezebel, and she aided in the wickedness that went on in that nation. And it tells us in verse 33 that Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings that were before him. And you know, you think he, 22 years, he's moving along pretty good. He's getting away with all of this, he thinks. But then when you turn to the next chapter, chapter 17, verse 1, everything begins to change. And I think for us, we might be a part of some of the things we're going to talk about here. We might be going on in our lives and thinking that things are going along pretty good. You know, I can just kind of live my life the way I want. And then all of a sudden, a time like COVID-19 interrupts our world. And suddenly, God has our attention. And that's always a good thing. Now, I want us to look at what the nation of Israel was experiencing and look at the correlation to our own lives. There were wicked rulers, there was national defiance, there was idol worship, there was denial of God, and then there was just personal defiance of God, denying the very existence of God. Now, we can't do very much in our world about those first two things, the fact that there are wicked rulers in our world. And there is national defiance. How many hundreds and millions of people that deny the fact that there is a God? But the last three are things that touch our lives. And I think it's so crucial that during this time of wow, however much more time we have to be able to be home and to have a little more time to think, that we consider these areas in our life. And the first one is the fact that they dethroned God by their idol worship. You know, you and I can dethrone the Lord, even though we're believers and we know Christ is our Savior. We can dethrone Him by the fact that we let other things come into our life and we love them more than we love God. We spend more time thinking about them than we do God. When you look at what the idol worshipers, the Baal worshipers did when they were putting the sacrifice on the altar, Think about the energy that they put into all of that. The imagination that they put into it. What is it in our lives that we give more energy to? That uses more of our mind than we do the things of the Lord? What is it that energizes you, that just makes you move forward and, and get excited about more than the things of God? That is an idol. 
anything that we put in our lives that will fill the void that we may be feeling, that will, we just need a little more joy, a little more something that's gonna empty, fill that emptiness that we're feeling, that is an idol. We are dethroning God. It could be our social media, filling so much time of our day in that. It could be our shopping. It could be our vacation. Think of how many people's lives have been interrupted because Disney World is closed right now. That's an idol in their life. My time, the things that I want to do, those are idols. They give me more, more energy. I put more thought into them than I do the things of the Lord. So what are we doing to dethrone God? I'm a visual learner and I wanna use some hand motions to help us to be able to remember that we wanna take the warning of the children of Israel and not dethrone God. We bow down before other things instead of God. What are you, de how, what are you using in your life that is dethroning the Lord? God wants you to set that aside, get rid of it, and put him in his rightful place during these days. The second thing that I think we can see in the children of Israel is that they denied God's existence. Jezebel even said that God was no longer in existence. He ceased to be. How do we live that way? When we get up in the morning and we don't stop and say, Lord, will you direct my steps today? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to spend my time? Here's my checkbook, Lord. How do you want me to spend my money? Lord, I'm having an issue with a, a relationship. How do you want to resolve this? Instead, we come up with a clever idea in our mind instead of turning to the Lord. We deny his very existence in so many ways. And I think of that when we, we deny God and the, the hand motion that I'm gonna show you is just that we just fold our ar arms. No. And God is back here. We turn our back to him and we handle things the way we want to handle them. Oh, maybe we'll turn to the Lord when we have an issue, a trial, a difficulty. But right now, no, we're denying his very existence. And the last thing I want us to talk about is the fact that they defied God. The last verse in chapter 16 tells us that they were raising the city of Jericho back up, despite the fact that God had said in Joshua 6, that they were not to build the city back up. And they said, I don't care what you're saying. We're going to build the city. We defy God when we do not obey his word. So is there a clear command in scripture that you are not obeying? How about the word submission? We kind of bristle when we hear that word as women. But God says that we are to submit to the authorities that are over us, we're to submit to our husbands. And if we are not, if we're bristling under that instead of obeying it, we are defying God. We're acting just like the children of Israel. What about Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Are we making God first in our life or is he fourth or fifth on the list? God wants us to put him first in everything. So are we dethroning God because we have other idols? Are we denying God's existence because we're living as practical atheists? Or are we defying God because we know that there's an area that we are not obeying? Hey, right now we might not be able to go to a ladies retreat, but the blessing is you could get alone with God there's no social distancing between you and the Lord right now. You can get as close to him as you want to be. Draw near to him during this time. Ask him, Lord, reveal to me any idols that I'm putting in my life, any way that I am denying your existence or any way that I am disobeying your word. We turn to chapter 17 and everything changes. God sees what we're doing. He saw, just like he saw King Ahab, Let's make it right during these days while we have a little bit of time. Lord willing, I'll be back again and we'll look into the next part of the story of Elijah. Thank you so much for listening.